Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We thought we would do something a little fun this week instead of another how-to video, and that is um, introduce ourselves or reintroduce ourselves if you've been with us for a while. And we'll do it with a little twist. I'll introduce Sean, he'll introduce me, and then we also sent out an email uh, to our email list and also shared it to our Facebook page uh, to let people know that we will take questions. So we have um, seven questions that are actually pretty good ones, I think, and we will answer those. And if you're not on our email list, you can go to chickoriestravels.com and sign up for it, and we send out a bunch of free stuff and tips and um, notices about new content that's on our blog and on our YouTube channel. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we can get into the introduction. So, Julie, I'll let you go no, first. No, no, I want you to go first because then if you say something bad, I can get my payback. <laughs> okay, so uh, Julie and I have been married for 17 years. Um, and I guess the first thing I'll say in the introduction is that she's a wonderful wife and mother mm -hmm. to our three boys. Um, and I've been married a few times, so I can say that with confidence. <laughs> um, and she was in the military and left the military after 20 years in 2007, which makes her old. <laughs> and um, she has a master's and she has an MBA. And so she, she's smart as well. And um, she, when we're RVing, she does all of the trip planning and also does the tanks. Um, so uh, I do all the driving and all the other maintenance. And so that's how we kind of split up duties. And uh, she's also very busy now, which is going to get into another question that we have. But she's very busy now uh, watching our grandson, Jax, who is seven months old. Yep. And uh, he, so she's been very busy with that over the last several months. And Sean was also in the military for 20 years, but he's a little bit younger than me. And he also had a break in service because what he didn't say was that we both uh, enlisted in the military. I enlisted in the Air Force and he enlisted in the Army. And I slowly worked on my degree overnight. And after 12 years of being enlisted is when I switched over to being an officer. Sean, um, on the other hand, did five years in the army. This is with the other wives. <laughs> and then he got smart, both about them and about the service, and switched over to the Air Force. Uh, but he actually had a break in service while he went to college. So um, he had that five-year break. So when he went into the Air Force, I met him at his first uh, Air Force duty station. At that time, I was a single parent to one son, and he was a single parent to two sons. And I saw what an amazing father he was, and I engineered us meeting and uh, luckily convinced him to fall in love with me. And like he said, we raised three boys. We had custody of them, uh, primary custody. We raised those three boys together, and um, we started RVing when we became empty nesters. And Sean what, retired from the Air Force after 20 years in 2016. So like I said, a little bit of a difference there. And in the Air Force and actually post Air Force, he specialty is laboratory, clinical laboratory in the Air Force, which that's like where you go to the hospital and get your blood drawn or urine tests, things like that. And he was in charge of that. Uh, but he didn't want to be a supervisor anymore, and I don't blame him because I didn't either after 20 years of that. So now he does medical research. Um, after retiring from the Air Force, he finished up his doctorate in health science. So I'm super proud of him, and I love saying I'm a doctor's mm -hmm. wife. <laughs> and he still works full-time remotely doing that, managing that uh, medical research for a laboratory component of a study. And like he said, he manages all of the, the driving and the maintenance and things like that. But what he didn't mention is he's also the calm one. So I'm the one who's like always panicking about stuff or just kind of getting a little worked up when things don't go exactly according to plan. And he kind of helps uh, talk me off the ledge. Yeah. So the, the next question for us is how long did we full-time 
And we started, actually, when I was still in the military, my last assignment was down in Florida. And so we started full-timing then. We actually lived in our RV on the base. Um, I was at MacDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida, and they have an awesome campground. And so we stayed there and um, took side trips when I had time off. And so we've been full, we full-timed for six years. Yeah, so I, a little over 18 months, I think, was on the base, and then we um, actually hit the road after that. And we had two RVs during that time. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, Arctic Fox that you see here, that's our current RV. And before that, we had a Heartland Cyclone uh, toy hauler. So the next question is, why aren't we full-timing any longer? And that is something that Sean kind of alluded to. I um, had always told him that when we had grandchildren, because I was really close to my boys, actually, all three of our boys, and ever since I've been an empty nester, I've been pining for grandchildren mm -hmm. so I could have uh, some more kids around. So I kind of always told him when we have our first grandchild, I'm probably going to want to be around them when they're very young. And so um, we just had our first grandchild seven months ago. So last year in anticipation of that, when our daughter-in-law was pregnant, we went ahead and bought a house. We wanted it to be on enough land so that we could still have the RV right there, no HOA, and we can hop in our RV and go whenever we want. But I do split childcare duties with the other grandma, my daughter-in-law's mom. So I have two days one week, three days the next week, and we alternate, and we're doing that for the first year so that he doesn't have to go to daycare the first year. And also, really, it's more for me than anything. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, when I'm away from him for like four days, if we go away for four days, I, I have to come back. Um, but we have actually taken him on, I think, three trips with us now? Two. Two? two oh, and RV then they trip. came on yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he's been RVing already. And uh, we think he likes it. Yep. And um, he, he takes up most of Julie's time now. So we have only been going RVing about once a month uh, since we've been in the house. Yeah, if I'm not watching Jax, I'm hiking. Yeah. It's one of the two. <laughs> yeah. So will we ever full-time again? Uh, yeah, definitely we will. Um, probably once... Uh, Jax hits the terrible twos <laughs> and we don't want to be around him as much anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's a good thing about being a grandparent is you can always pass them off to the parents and leave. But no, we will definitely full time again. Probably I would say within five years, we'll be back on the road full time. Um, we may or may not keep this as a home base because it's in a beautiful location right outside of Shenandoah National Park. And we have some land and we get wildlife on our land. So it's a nice place to, to be when you're not RVing because it is out in the country. Uh, you know, we can't even see our neighbors. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. And so we will full time again, but we may keep a home base instead of selling everything like we did the first time. Yeah. And the one thing that Sean and I have always said, and I think maybe this has to do with having been in the military and moving every three years is that we always say that we make for now decisions not forever decisions so that's why we say maybe probably because we were the same way when we were full timing we were like we're going to do this as long as we feel like doing this and now we're trying something new and we're going to do this for as long as we feel like doing this and when we're ready we'll change and try something else yeah but there's still a ton of places we want to go in the rv oh, yeah so um we'll definitely i think full-time again for at least a few years I'm sure so the next question is how are you able to pay off all that debt while traveling so a little backstory in case you haven't watched one of our videos on this we actually were like kind of these typical American people who even though we were both working we buy a car and finance it buy a um, you know, buy anything and finance it really, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, credit cards for vacations and all of these kind of things. And after we were traveling full time in the RV, we had that first Heartline Cyclone and we had financed that and our truck, which was a, sh a brand new Chevy Dually. And this was a brand new 44 foot toy hauler. 
And after a couple years, we realized we didn't really love that RV. It wasn't the right one for us. And so we wanted to trade it in and get another one. And we found out we owed more, a lot more, <laughs> than um, we... Wait, we owed more than it was worth. Than it was worth. That's right. So we had we realized we were upside down, and so we kind of went in search of whole knowledge about how to pay down debt, and we came across this book called the Total Money Makeover. And I shouldn't say we. Sean did, and he wanted me to read it, and I was a little reluctant at first because I had a feeling it was going to change my ways, but and it did. I did finally read it. We both embraced it. So we embraced something called the Baby Steps to paying off debt and getting completely debt free. We were both still working full time, just remotely from the RV, but we were actually full time employees. And then as we started that debt free journey, I changed from being a full time employee to working on Chicory's Travels and to co-founding Full Time Freedom Week. And we both got a contract speaking um, at RV shows and rallies and so a lot of side hustles is what I'm getting at. And um, we just really chipped away at it. How much debt did we pay off, Sean? Oh, like a hundred. I think the total was like 186000 In three years? Three years, about three years. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I say the biggest thing, obviously, so you have a hole and they say you, one thing that helps is having a bigger shovel to fill that hole. So that's where both of us still working and doing the side hustles came in. Obviously, we looked for ways to reduce our expenses, but not too much because I'm a little spoiled. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like we went all out boondocking or anything like that. We do like to boondock sometimes, but um, we just found other ways to save money and, and try to enjoy our lives. So not super frugal, but just not also too extravagant. And then um, the biggest thing I think though, more than anything else was having a budget, a budget that had every single thing that we spend a dollar on, even, even savings and, and every Christmas gifts, everything, budgeting that out and tracking it. That more than anything really helped me personally as an impulse buyer get disciplined. And before I would purchase anything, anything at all, even groceries, I would always look at that budget and we used an app so we could, like if I went grocery shopping, say we budgeted $400 for groceries and I had already spent a hundred, I would pull up that app and I would know exactly how much I had to spend before I would go on the next shopping excursion. And it was like that for anything, even if I wanted to get a Starbucks, I would look in my, what I called my fun money and, and do that. And so we actually um, created a program called Full-Time RV Finance where we get way into the weeds on budgeting for full-time RV travel because there are a lot of things that like all the blogs and stuff don't tell you. And then um, we also talk about like the process to pay off debt. We talk about like envisioning your life and setting goals for the future and then ways to save money and make money when you're on the road. And it's called full-time RV finance, full-time RV finance.com if you're interested in looking at that. And we still live on a budget, um, and it's we don't see it as a hindrance. Mm -hmm. We see it as a good thing, and it really does give us the flexibility. Like Julie said, we don't make forever decisions. We make for now decisions, and that gives us the flexibility to pivot without having to worry about um, the expense so much. And and I'm not going to say this next statement to brag. I'm going to say it because to let you know that it's possible. So when we started in 2016 on this getting out of debt journey, uh, we had a negative net worth. And now we our net worth is north of a half a million dollars, not including our military retirement. So um, it's possible. It's um, you don't have to live like poppers. You know, mm -hmm. we still kept fair. We still keep fairly normal lives. We don't go overboard on anything uh, we still have our 2014 uh, chevy dually and we were able to pay cash for our arctic fox fifth wheel when we uh when we wanted to purchase that in 2019 so it is possible it is easy we didn't do anything special we just focused and um really focused on what 
money was coming in and what money was going out and worked on ways to increase that. So. And that Arctic Fox is really a good example of, of everything we're talking about because we wanted another RV after about two years. But when we realized we were so underwater and then we decided to just get out of debt altogether and then save up the money for the next RV, we weren't able to make that swap right away. So we stayed with an RV that we didn't love because we had set a goal. And then we could have bought another RV sooner if we'd have gotten a less expensive fifth wheel, but we decided we wanted the Arctic Fox for a list of reasons. And we'll include a link in the, in the bio about the video on why we chose the Arctic Fox. And it's more expensive than most fifth wheels, but there's reasons why. And so we waited. We This time, for the first time in our lives, I think we used patience. Yeah. And we set a goal, and we decided when we wanted to meet that goal, and we divided it by how many months we had to achieve that, and that's how much money we put away every single month. And, and if, sometimes we'd put extra in there so we could achieve the goal sooner, but never less. And if we wanted to do something else, we'd say, well, do we really want that Arctic Fox or do we want this other thing? And usually it was like, no, we want the Arctic Fox. Yeah. And she said link in bio, but I think she meant link in description. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I've got Instagram on the brain. You always say link in bio. <laughs> So uh, the next question was, do we have any regrets? And I think one of our regrets, both of us, is that we didn't rent uh, RVs before we went and purchased that first mm -hmm. one because it would have really influenced our decision on, on buying that Heartland Cyclone. So I think that's one regret that we had right from the get-go. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, anything else is just lessons learned. But I do really wish, because we had never RV'd before, that we had rented um, and rented a few different RVs for longer trips. And I know a lot of people say, oh, but it's so expensive to rent an RV. And, and it's not inexpensive. They're right about that. But that depreciation, boy, is a kick in the pants. Mm -hmm. So um, we paid a lot more in depreciation and interest yeah. <laughs> than we would have on uh, renting. And I think now that we've been in the RV community for such a long time that I think one regret I have, not about RVing, but life in general, is that we didn't do it when we had our three kids um, because it's been a wonderful experience for us. Mm -hmm. um, lots to learn and see across the country. And um, I think they would have uh, benefited from RVing, um, and I think it would have probably uh, made our family even stronger by doing it too. So that's a long-term regret, more of a life regret than an RV-specific regret, I guess. And probably why we're RVing now already with our grandson. And our kids as adults have come and stayed with us in the RV or in a cabin or something while we've been traveling in the RV, but yeah. It would have been cool if we'd have got into this um, before, but I don't really consider that a regret just because it wasn't necessarily doing anything wrong. It was just different, and it was mm -hmm. something that I didn't really know about. Like, I didn't know anything about RVing back then. Yeah. So, uh, what would you change? Oh, what would I change about RVing, I guess? Is that, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess that's what the question is. Um... Hmm, well, besides that first RV and renting for... Oh, so one thing I would change, and this is now, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, and now being out of debt, one thing I would change is if I had known back then, you know, what a difference it can make on your life, I would have waited a few years to RV and got debt-free first. And I know a lot of people say things like, nothing's ever promised to you. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when, you know, if you're going to have some life altering injury and you got to like seize the moment. But you also on the flip side of that, don't know how long you're going to live. And when Sean's grandma had open heart surgery, I went and stayed with her for a month or six weeks um, to help her so that she wouldn't have to go into a nursing home. And there are so many people in her neighborhood who were like, I want to go visit family or I want to buy something or I need a new car or I need a new roof. I mean, you name it. 
and they can't afford it because they did not save enough for retirement and for living longer. So I think there's a balance to be had between enjoying your life now and seizing the moment and planning for a long life um, as well. And I think we didn't strike that balance. Yeah, and I think um, another thing, one thing I would change in terms of RVing is I would have gone to all the state and national parks that were around wherever we were because um, I, I think later on in our RV travels, we started going to more of them mm -hmm. and they're awesome places. Yeah. I mean, most of the time there's, yeah. there's lots to see and do in state parks. And I apologize. I keep moving my head because this, I keep getting a, uh, like, I don't know what it is, but my face is disappearing a little bit oh, at times. Don't yeah. Worry about it. So mm -hmm. it, um, it, I think I would have done more of that uh, earlier on in our journeys uh, instead of going like to to just towns and cities and exploring yeah. them. I think I would have would have wanted to venture more into the state parks and the national parks more than we did. Yeah, and a couple of the limiting factors for us on those were, again, the RV. We had a 44-foot fifth wheel, and it really couldn't fit in national parks. Um, the other thing was um, we they, didn't, they don't have full hookups, and I think we just didn't learn that much about RVing, so maybe we were a little nervous or afraid to to kind of be off the grid. I mean, we didn't even go boondocking our first time for like two years in. So I think what another thing I would change is I would go to like escapees has this thing called boot camp and stuff like that. I mean, I might have done a few things like that and got a little more education about it and felt a little more comfortable in the RV right out of the gate so that we could have enjoyed those things. But that's okay. We'll go hit them next. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I want to go back to... Um... Uh, how long we full-timed and, and that whole thing and really give credit to um, John and Kathy Huggins oh, yeah. who had a podcast called Living the RV Dream. Yeah, someone else has it now, but they started it. And uh, that really inspired us and gave us the confidence uh -huh. that we would be able to, to go out and do it. So yeah. I think that podcast, their version of the podcast is still out there in places and uh, if you get a chance, just go listen to some of those old episodes and they're just great. And yeah. they made everything so simple when it came down to uh, full-time RVing. Yeah, they really did. Yeah. Okay, so the last question is the favorite place that you visited. Hmm. So mine, uh, probably, I have kind of three that are tied. Mm -hmm. um, Number one is Big Bend National Park down in southwest Texas, uh, right on the Rio Grande River. Just an awesome place. Um, very quiet. Uh, not many people out there, which is what I like. And lots to see. You can be in the mountains. You can be in the desert. You can be in the river all within minutes of each other. So just a great place. Uh, lots of wildlife there. Yeah. And the people are are very friendly down there, I thought. Um, so that was number one. Number two, Key West, Florida. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, just like another country down there <laughs> is what I liked about it. It really is a different culture and a different time mm -hmm. there. And I really enjoyed our time in, in Key West. And then last would be Tucson, Arizona, uh, just because it's a great city. We really liked everything about Tucson. We did, and I have to say, I just agree with you on all three. All three of those, I love them so much that even though my bucket list is still so long, like my bucket list, the more we RV, the longer the list gets because yeah. I follow other people on Instagram or I see what they're doing and I just keep adding it. But I want to go back to all three of those. And another reason why I want to go back to all three of those is since we've moved here, like Sean said, we live near Shenandoah National Park. And so I've really gotten into hiking. I'm hiking like 100 miles plus a month. And I used to only do like the 
the three mile trails right off near the visitor center or right off of the main drive whenever you would go visit a place. And so now I want to go back everywhere we've been to do a ton more hiking and that would include those three locations. But um, I also want to go to all, all the national parks. But I, I have to add on to what you said about the national parks. I'm glad we didn't go to the national parks before because now I want to take our grandson Jax to all the national parks and I want him to be get the junior park ranger for every one of them. Yeah, now we have a dog that can get the 